So you've probably gathered from the title that we're asking for your help this time. We thought we'd turn things around. Up to now, we've done things and then shown you what we've done. We thought this time we'd talk about a project that we're about to do and actually ask for some input. Welcome to the Gauge One layout at ADMES. Now, I'm going to take you through what we're going to do here and then hopefully we'll get some feedback as to how we could best do it. So starting here, we've got three sidings and they run into this line here and that stays there. So we're not going to consider that anymore. Here are the three running tracks and the one we're particularly interested in for this project is the outermost running track. Now, if we follow this track round, it goes round this bend and then it hits this set of points here. Now, this is one of the points we're going to be motorising as phase one of this project. The main line then continues up here and it's the third one down here, but it becomes the fourth because there's a siding, an extra siding up there. So if we follow the main line down, it follows and it continues to be the fourth one down and we continue on that line and here we come back to it being a set of three and this is the other point that we're going to motorise in phase one of this project. What we're going to do is have two colour aspects, red and green, beside the main line. When that's green it's going to mean the points are set for the main line. When it's red, it's going to mean the point is set for the branch line. So there's no signalling, if you like, for the branch line. It's just that one. If it's red, it means you go around the branch. So there's this signal here, and there's a signal at the other end. So the project is to provide ground level signals here and at the other end, and to drive these points. So what we're going to do now is show you the ideas that we've come up with and then please feel free to comment and tell us if you've got any ideas as better ways and then as we go through this project step by step we'll keep producing videos and we'll show you where we're at. So if the signal's green it's going to infer we're going to proceed down here from the main line to here. If the signal however is red we are going from the branch line up here this way. Our thoughts for operating the points, and we found these linear actuators. Now, that's got a travel of 10 mil, which exceeds this, which we think is about five. So our thinking was to somehow mount this actuator at 90 degrees and have a bell crank arrangement of some sort, so that when this moved, it operated the points. Now, Clearly, there needs to be some giving that because once the points reach the end stop and hit the track, we don't want to strain anything. So somehow we've got to add some flexibility. If we look at this point here, you'll see that what we've done is actually added a bend in this piece of, it may be phosphor bronze, we're not sure, which actually gives that give when the points reach the end stop. We are thinking of the best way to make this all work and this is where if you've got some ideas please put them in the comments below. We will definitely look at them um, because there probably is a very nice way of doing this. For those of you not familiar with Gauge 1 track, the inside to inside is 45 millimetres and the height of the track, and this is the important one, is 15 millimetres and we mustn't have anything higher than track heights within effectively 45 millimetres so that rules anything out that's above track height to about here so there's no way we could have anything between the tracks because it would either impede this one or impede this one. Two weeks have passed since the last video, and I think we may have gripped it. We tried so many different ways of mechanically joining 
the actuator you saw in the last video to the points and it was really, really, really hard. We ended up with using a Bowden cable, the sort of cable that bikes use for their brakes. So if we look at this end of the Bowden cable, and this is the end that actually actuates the points, you can see the outer is clipped with a brass P-clip that we made, and the inner goes to a radio controlled, it's the end that radio controllers use to power the ailerons of model aircraft, and that clips through a hole that we made in the actuating lever, if you like, that operates the points. The other end of the Bowden cable is joined to this actuator, and the actuator, for the prototype, we mounted it ad hoc, and it was okay, we managed to make it work, but Peter has made this 3D printed holder that the actuator actually sits in and screws into, and it also has the facility for clamping the outer of the Bowden cable, and the inner of the Bowden cable is actually connected to the pusher of the actuator. The whole thing seems to work fine. We've got it driven by this ASP222 and that's just set to change state on the points every 20 seconds. And we've been running this for a while now and it seems super reliable and we are very happy with the way this is working. Once again, if you've got any other ideas, please let us know. Um, or if you've got any feedback or any comments on what we've done here, we'd love to hear from you. I'll see you on the next video.